welcome to the course of computer design of electrical machine so we will have a lecture 9 today on design of dc machine part 1 so the outline of today presentation is starting from introduction we will go operating principle of dc machine then construction of dc machine important features of dc machine then output equation of dc machine followed by exercise and numerical problem and references like coming to the introduction of this dc machine the dc machines were widely used in power generation as well as in distribution earlier days and DC machine can conveniently work in both generating and motoring mode. DC generator were the prime source of supply in both industry and domestic consumers uh, during the addition period and all electrical network were based on the DC in those days. However, the AC system due to flexibility, lower cost of generation and transmission and higher efficiency replaced the DC system and now AC system almost universally used. However, DC machines are used in many applications like aircraft, ship, windmill, etc. as the DC machine are capable of acting both as a motor and generator. In generating mode, the DC machine is driven by a primer and the mechanical power supplied is converted to electrical power and in motoring mode, the machine is powered electrically and drive a mechanical load. So, coming to the applications of uh, typically of this DC machine, DC motors offer several advantage in application, they operate at low speed such as cranes and host and Advantage include low speed accuracy, short time overload capacity, capability, size, torque, providing control and load steering. As you can see the DC motor for crane and host here like. Now the DC motor offer superior characteristic at lower speed of for uh, winder and coiler operation and performance and winder applications maintaining tension and tension at stand still is very important. Operation and DC motor offer a wide speed range at rated torque as you can see in photograph. So, DC motors offer several advantages in marine application and compact as a compact size is one of the biggest advantage as you can see in the photograph. Large DC motor used for propulsion in old older ships and now motor for propulsion in smaller boats like. Now, the DC motor are often preferred in high horsepower application requiring the mining and drilling industry and DC drive offer advantage in size and cost. They are result dependable and true one in the industry as you can see in the typically photograph for uh, DC motors in mining and drilling. And the typical 8250 8, kilowatt DC motor used in mining application. Yeah, DC motor offer economic solution to 600 to 1000 horsepower range which commonly used in extruder application as you can see here particular kind of extruder or so. DC motor used in traction applications as a DC series motor and you can just see most of the old trains or many even today they are operated by DC motor because it offers a very high starting torque and it gives the constant power characteristic which required for traction application. And the typical example tall world DC motor can be used in many appliances and applications like a starting from RV stabilizer, direction motor, RV motorized steps, window motor, then lift motor and apart from that recon motor. And DC motor also used in track some, uh, traction application of course with the gear, I mean as you can see DC motor in DV and the DC motors are used in high speed tools with the gear and DC motors used in industrial equipment as you can see the glossy of the, I mean the industrial equipment. The DC motors are used in fan for a small rating, these are the small rating fans apart from that they are used all in computer with the pumping net excitation. They are used pumping at brush DC motors for most of the computers including laptop and desktop. So, DC motor also used in robotics applications as a servo motor with the gear to provide the high torque and certainly I mean they are operated at low voltage and high speed but with the gear they can be I mean tailored their characteristic as a servo motor for the robotics application. DC motor also used in pump application a special kind of pump. They are also used in conveyors, the DC motors are used in blowers. The DC motor also used in spinning and weaving. The DC motors are used in vacuum cleaners of handhold type and portable kind because of charging operations as you can see hand held vacuum cleaners and typically the some of the robotics kind of applications. The DC motors are used in sewing machine as you can see here. The DC motors also used in lathe machine as a good servo motor and DC motors are also used in electrical toothbrush as you can see lot of of course, these are all small DC motors with a permanent excitation. 
then DC motors are used in elevators, these are used in home automation, they are also DC motors are used in printer and appliances and these DC motors are used in mechatronics application as a good servo motor. Of course, the C shunt motors are used in industrial tools as a I mean typically in drilling, mining, machine, lace and of course the respective pump and centrifugal pump. The motor also used in machine tool cutting, grinding, drilling and polishing. The DC commutative compound motors are used in machine tool cutting, grinding, polishing as you can see typically photograph of rolling mill, punch and sear. Then of course, the small DC motor with pound net exception they are used in, in a four wheeler like electric car for most of the appliances I mean with of course the gear to provide the high torque and of course they are of short rating. So, you can see how many small pump net brush DC motors are used in mean like AV lock, lock charger, trunk cover, seat, power lift gate, heat propulsion, e shifter, hand, dis hand up display, washer pump, wiper pump, electric mirror, then door lock, display handle and window lift, sunroof and slider door. And these are typically DC motors used in toys. On most toys industry is a very big industry where we use the permanent brush DC motor with low voltage. Typically, the 6 volt toy motor of at, running at 6000 rpm with a gear to provide the high torque for this all the toys. Then you have a you can see about 36 type of DC motors for small applications use toys and many other applications I mean of the uh, toys industry. Then of course, DC motor are used as a servo motor for solar. Uh, PV panel tracking as you can see with the gear because it needs high torque as you can see how it is a tracking you taken place from that is small DC motor with the high torque I mean because of the gear then DC motor sole tracking as you can see as a prototype then of course these motor this how you see with the gear with that the volt of 12 volt to 48 volt for solar tracking or 48 volts tracker with the gear and this motor used in disciplinary planetary gear motor for solar system of course so you have a large number of application but these later application are of permanent brush dc motor where the stator i mean the diameter of the motor is reduced by putting a layer of the permanent in place of stator winding and stator pole shoe as well as pole teeth so you these so these motor become give a very good torque speed characteristic as a linear motor and of course they are designed at high speed though size of the motor is reduced and apart from that typically we use the gear to increase the torque I'm like. So, coming to operating principle of the DC motor, a magnetic field arises in the air gap when the field coils of the DC motor are is energized or by the field permanent excitation. So, magnetic field enters the armature from north pole to side to the field coils and exists in the armature from field coil to south pole side and the conductors located on the other pole are subjected to the force of the same intensity but in the opposite direction. As you can see example here, I field excitation is there how the poles are I mean really develop I mean end pole and S pole and armature in between and so these two operating force create a torque that causes the motor to rotate and the torque generated by the two conductor typical example as a principle and you can see typical example how the I mean the with the commuter and brush arrangement the current current are changed in the coils which we call it commuter direction like and you can see how the motion is take place by producing the torque by feeding the current into the armature winding with the brush and commuter assembly and of course excited north and south pole on a stator to field. So, of course, the angle is always 90 degree between the two. So, induced torque in the rotating conductor in DC motor is DC machine. Rotating machine consists of a single loop of wire floating about the fixed axis and the magnetic field is supplied by the north and south pole of the magnet or electromagnet and the force on a segment of a loop is F equal to I L into B. Uh, or the torque for rotary motion is R F into sin theta where theta is the angle between R and F. So, in this machine it is always 90 degree. So, you can say force or torque in different sections are a segment A B if you look into on the this conductor so the virtually in uh, A B section it is F A B is I L B into I that is what torque is I R F into sin theta and it is R I L B into sin 90 that is R L I B segment BC, the another side of the coil, you have a B I equal to LB into 0 because by the torque R F sin theta theta is 0, so that is why torque is there 0 and segment CD, 
एफ सी डी आई एल बी इंटू आई एल एंड टॉर्क इज टी सी डी आर एफ साइन थीटा तो इस आर आई एल बी इंटू साइन नाइन टी दैट आर आई आर एल आई बी एंड सेगमेंट डी ए टिपिकली दैट इज एफ वाई एन टू इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज टॉर्क इज ऑल्सो आर एफ साइन थीटा जीरो तो नाउ कमिंग टू द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस मशीन एज यू कैन सी सी द कटवे तो वी हैव ए डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द डी सी मशीन कॉल्ड फील्ड सिस्टम और एक्साइटेशन सिस्टम ऑन द स्टेटर then armature on the rotor then commutator i mean on the side of the armature then the brushes which are riding on the commutator and then the bearing as you can see typically how a dc motor cutway looks like or you can see with the different parts here of the dc machine in open form i mean you can see typically the field poles with the wound coil i mean like a, then a stator frame then the armature core armature winding core is the commutator fifth is the typically the main pole 6 is the interpole and 7th is the brush gear typically here now coming to the field system of this dc machine it develops the required magnetic field in the machine or magnetization of different parts of the machine in a magnetic circuit and the field winding is placed on the silent pole where the stationary and hence it is called stator the field system or stator of the dc machine have frame or yoke poles field winding interpole winding and inter typically interpoles and interpole winding you can see typically how the different parts are there in that you have a field winding on the pole body then you have a pole through which spreads the flux around the armature and then you have a typically armature conductor in the armature core you have a commutator on the side of this armature on which the brushes are located and then of course we have a frame typically and we have a interpole between the two in a main poles or so so we have field excitation system on the pole body and you see because of the field coil excited then the poles are produced of opposite polarity i mean like of neighboring poles like now typically in field system there is a yoke it provides the magnetic path as well as the mechanical support to the whole machine and earlier cast iron yokes were being used but now cast steel yokes are preferred due to the large permeability of the cast steel and due to this the sectional area of cast yoke is considerably reduced to half of the sectional area of the cast iron yoke and the edge forged steel yokes are made and you can see the example of how it is the field system with the yoke is there so typically on the pole you can see the pole here and the field winding on the pole body and with the proper connection with the of course with the yoke like and frame so you can say now typically how it the pole body and pole through the main poles are designed to produce the magnetic flux and it consists of pole core and pole through and the pole through has dual functionality that is support the field coils as well as spread the flux in the air gap so now the magnetic field poles consist of pole core and pole through and silent pole cover larger cross section area to achieve the smooth spreading of flux in the air gap across the large portion of air gap and reducing the reluctance of magnetic circuit and it also provide the support to the field winding and cast steel pole core with the laminations are normally being used and strengthen by screw bolted through the yoke in the pole body steel bar and the end place and rivet like uh, we have filled system with the pole body as you can see the here the pole core and the typically pole through of this like so we have a typically the field winding structure as you can see in the photograph also the two types of field windings are used in dc machine main field winding and interpole winding the main field winding the field coils of field winding are made of copper the shape of winding conductors may be round wires or a strip as required the field winding consists of both front and series coils series field coils have the larger conductor cross section area because they almost consist the same current as the armature current and are placed below the front field coil as you can see typically here the field winding of the dc machine and typically the interpole winding in between the as it is the arrow so the interpoles are provided to improve the commutation and thus tensioner is sparkless operation of the dc machine and they are made of laminated low steel low carbon steel in case of large machines and solid low carbon steel poles are used in case of small machine to avoid magnetic saturation at the root they are tapered to have sufficient sectional area so coming to now rotor assembly or armature the rotor of dc machine consists of the following like armature core as it is shown in the typically photograph and armature winding in the slots of this armature 
and we have a of course commuter and bearing on the shaft along with. So, as the photograph of this you can clearly see that we have the coils, we have iron core, we have a coil with the coil commuter interconnections and then we have insulation between the commuter segment and then the typically the coil insulation as a rotor or you can say armature total assembly on the rotor. So, coming to armature core, the armature core houses the armature conductor and provide the load reluctance path to magnetic flux and armature core made of steel silicon steel stamping about 0.35 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter thickness. These stampings are insulated from each other by a thin coating of varnish and slots are cut in punch on the outer periphery of circular core stamping and the radial ventilation spacers are provided in between the core dividing it into packets to achieve the better cooling. So, this is typically the armature core how you can look like with the typically with the slots like with the less number of of course the slot. So, the armature winding are generally form bound and the armature conductor are insulated from each other and are placed in slots and these armature slots are lined with a thin insulating material called leatherite paper. Normally, two layer windings are huge. Of course, you can have a multi layer winding also. The two coil sides of the coil are placed approximately one pole pitch away, one in north pole, another side of in south pole. That is the one coil side lies placed on the top of the slot, then other coils is placed at the bottom of the slot at a distance of one pole pitch. Now, there are two type of winding, armature winding. Uh, lab winding is used for low voltage and high current machine with the parallel path equal to number of poles. The is also called dumb type winding first type and for high voltage low current machine wave winding is used with the number of parallel path equal to 2, the winding type 2 and gamma ring of the winding is all now obsolete like. You can clearly see how it is typically the lab winding that the winding is put in the slots and how interconnection and the brushes of course are put on a particular commutators to I mean the push the current as a motor I mean uh, and take the typically the current also out and in case of generator of course, it takes the power out from this. So, this we call it lab tape winding where the number of parallel path equal to number of poles and the how the winding construction is there clearly you can see how they are put in the slots and the pole formation uh, and S and S on the field side and these are the in different slot two conductor two coil sides in one con slot side and how on they are connected to the commuter segment I mean and then how the brushes are placed on the commuter segment. So, they develop lab winding for the four pole you can extend to any number of poles I mean this kind of the winding with the large machines like. Then of course, the typical example that this is a type we have a lab wind, typically lab winding of many kind like simplex lab winding and duplex lab winding or retrogressive I mean if we really go to the next conductor back and progressive means it the this lap lapping progresses ahead or lapping processes back that decide the retrogressive and progressive lap winding. Then we have another kind of winding armature winding we call it wave type it looks like wave as you can see here and one coil side of course, under the end pole then another is S pole and it covers almost like a typically I mean parallel path remains always the two and it covers almost like a if you see one coil another coil side goes to almost one pole which apart to the commuter segment also then another end comes back to the next commuter segment or the previous commuter segment depends on retrogressive and progressive winding. So, this is the developed wave winding and here you can put more brushes, but of course, two are minimum required two may be enough because there is only two parallel path here. So, this is developed winding for four poles and this is the type of connections that I mean for if you are using uh, it is a gamma ring winding how it is put earlier now it is obsolete because of several reasons that is not able to give that much out other one. Now, coming to the commutator segment, the commutator facilitate collection of current from the armature conductor or feed the armature current to the conductor. It rectified the AC current induced in the armature conductor into DC current for the actual load current. Armature consists always the alternating current I mean because it has a conductor have a uh, alternating current because once it comes under one polarity pole to develop the torque they should have one direction another under polarity pole they must have another direction of current to have a like a same direction of torque. So, it is a cylindrical structure placed on one end of the armature it is built up with a wedge shape segments of higher conductivity hard drawn copper and these copper bars or segments are insulated from each other by 
thin layer of mica or mechanite and the copper segments are connected to RMC conductor by means of copper lug or riser. So, as you can see how it looks like a commutator, complete commutator assembly with the I mean the riser on the bottom and how the commutator segments are made normally the brass or copper with the mica insulation in between like and you can see how the typically the brush holders put the brush on the with the typically the spring so that pressure is there I mean the always brush is press on the commuter segment like. So, now I am coming to brush arrangement I mean the brushes are put on the commuter segment as you can, you can see in the photograph. The brushes used for collection of current are made uh, of natural graphite hard carbon electro graphite of metal or metal graphite they are placed in the brush holder and the box type holders are the most widely used one and the number of brush holders will be equal to the number of poles. So, now the holders is mounted on a spindle and the brush slides in a rectangular slot in, in the holders and it, it is present on the commutator by a spring whose tension can be adjusted by a small level. At the top of the brush a flexible copper pig tail is mounted and this conveys the current collected by the brush to the holder and there may be a by several brushes per spindle depending on the magnitude of the current. So, you can just see how the brush with the I mean typically with the popular connections arrangement is there for the DC machine. Why it is made the brushes with the carbon because this lies on the commuter segment. So, this is made soft steel it is only the two brushes or maybe four brushes. So, you can replace the brushes it should I mean like if because of wear and tear, but of course commuter assembly is a costly and it is on the army it is very difficult I mean so maintenance is only of through the brushes not really through the commuter of this tip. Coming to bearing arrangement. Now, the bearings the armature shaft is generally supported at the end of balls or roll bearing. In a small machine ball bearings are used in both end whereas, the large machine roller bearings are used at the driving end and ball bearings are used in non driving end at the commuter end and pedestal bearings are also used for large machine and you can clearly see like a sleeve bearing how it looks like and wall bearing how it looks like with the ball. Now, coming to important features of this DC machines the Features associated with the design of DC machines are factor affecting the choice of specific magnetic loading like called B, uh, I mean flux density and factor affecting the choice of electrical loading like a small AC and uh, selection of air gap length uh, typically LG and effect of armature. So, now coming to typically the choice of magnetic loading depends on the factors as you can see here the frequency which is decided by the speed and number of poles the teeth flux density I mean like that depends on the width of the teeth and then the voltage applied as well as the size of the machine. So, these are several factors which affect the choice of a specific magnetic loading and average flux density in the air gap called B average. So, now first is the frequency the iron loss in the machine is proportional to frequency and B average and higher frequency results in increase results in increased iron losses in the armature core and teeth. So, for the machine having higher frequency one should choose a higher value of B average to keep the teeth flux density within the permissible limit like I mean. Now, coming to the teeth flux density with the higher value of flux density the flux density of the teeth at its maximum section also increases and generally this should be kept within 2.2 Weber per meter square value above this increases the iron loss exponentially higher ampere turns are also required pass flux through the teeth. So, this may increase the copper losses also hence the higher value of B average will not be chosen. So, you have a constraint on average flux density if you increase higher value of it the size of the machine reduces and if you really but at the cost of certainly the losses and efficiency decrease. Now, coming to voltage rating for high for the machine high voltage rating the more space is required for insulation. So, for the given diameter of the machine less space is available for iron leading to narrower teeth. So, in higher value of B average is chosen then the teeth flux density may go above permissibility. So, increasing the losses and decreasing the efficiency. Now, coming to the size with the higher value of B average the tooth flux density increases to avoid the magnetic saturation the width of the teeth has to be increased this increases the diameter of the armature. So, with the increased diameter the volume and size also increase and suitable value of B average usually ranges between 0.45 to 0.7 Tesla or Weber per meter square 
this is average flux density in the air gap. So, now coming to choice of a specific electric loading that we call the small AC. So, there are several factors which affect the choice of the specific electric loading like temperature rise, speed, armature action, competition, voltage and size. So, coming to first with the temperature rise, the higher value of uh, specific electric loading increases the copper loss and hence the heat produced is to be more. Higher value of AC means either the diameter is less or more copper is used. When the diameter is less, heat dissipation may be poor due to reduced surface area and when more copper is used, the overall insulation thickness is to be more leading to poor dissipation. The speed for high speed machine as the ventilation is more, the more losses could be easily dissipated. So, hence high speed machines can use higher value of specific electric loading. Now, coming to the voltage, high voltage rating machines require more space for insulation, thus the space available for iron and copper is less. So, because of this limitations imposed by flux density, it may not be possible to reduce the for iron. So, the space for copper is also reduced. So, in such cases, lower value of AC has to be used. Now coming to the size, large size machine have a larger space for iron and copper and higher value of the AC uh, specific electric loading could be used. Now coming to armature reaction with the higher value of AC, uh, the armature current increases and increasing the armature MF and the armature reaction which is the distortion of the field MF due to armature also increases. So higher value of AC should not be chosen to compensate for the distortion the field MF field ampere turns are increased which increases the cost of the copper. Now coming to reactance voltage which causes the problem in commutation or commutation. So if the voltage drop due to leakage reactance of armature winding and the reactance voltage increases due to the higher AC as higher AC increases armature current and has the drop cause and when, or as well as number of turns. So when reactance voltage is increased the commutation is delayed and the value of AC usually varies between 15,000 to 50,000 ampere conduct per meter in wide varying rating of the machine. So, coming to advantage of higher specific and magnetic loading, the size and volumes of the machine are machine is, are reduced and weight of the machine is reduced and overall cost of the uh, machine are reduced when you go to specific higher value of specific uh, electric and magnetic loading. The disadvantage of higher specific electric loading, armature copper loss is increased, commutation becomes inferior. Commutation reactance voltage increase, field copper loss increases due to higher excitation current and overall temperature rise also increase. Disadvantage of higher specific magnetic loading, higher iron losses in, I mean iron losses increase, field copper losses increases, higher <coughs> magnetic load of no load current, tooth flux density increases, noise in the machine increases and possibility of magnetic saturation iron parts increases. So now coming to selection of air gap length. There are several factors which affect the choice of length, air gap length like armature reaction, circulating current, pole phase losses, noise, cooling and mechanical region. So, coming to first with the typically for selection of length air gap, uh, what this armature, how is armature reaction is affected. When the air gap length of the machine is more, the field MF required will be more and the increased value of field MF will reduce the distortion effect of armature MF and the larger a gap. Uh, the distortion of the field form is reduced, but the increase in the field MF will result increase in size and cost of the machine. Now, circulating current, if the air gap in machine with multipolar lab finding is small, any irregularity may cause the large circulating current. So, air gap should be large in such machine. Now, pole phase losses in rotating machine, if armature are slotted, if armature is slotted and on the rotation, there is a rapid change of the gap. Uh, reluctance, this change of reluctance give rise to the flux pulsation which produces additional losses called pulsation loss in the teeth and pole phase and this effect is considerably increased if the length of air gap is small and as compared to the slot opening. So, the pulsation loss in the pole phases will decrease if the length of air gap is increased. Now, coming to the noise, it will cause the quiet operation of the machine if with the large air gap and cooling, large air gap length certainly will cause the machine for better ventilation. So, now coming to mechanical reasons, a machine without commutating poles have a large value of air gap length to minimize distortion of the field form. So, due to use of commutative pole or interpole, the length of the air gap can be reduced to minimum value from the mechanical point of view. With a smaller air gap length, the possibility of unbalanced magnetic pole and rotor may collide. 
collide with the stator. So, the air gap length should be much should be taken suitably taken to avoid these phenomena. Now, coming to effect of armature reaction, armature even effect on the following like induced EMF, electromagnetic in, induced EMF, RN losses, sparking and ring fire and commutation. So, coming to the first like in electromagnetic force or EMF, when the machine is running under saturation condition, then the flux per pole decreases due to armature reaction and if the machine is loaded, the induced EMF generated in the machine decreases due to decrease in the flux per pole and this reduction in value of uh, flux depends upon the degree of saturation. So, value of flux reduces much if the machine is heavily loaded. Coming to iron losses, the iron losses in the teeth and poles too depend on the flux density in the M due to the field distortion, the effect of armature reaction, the flux density at loaded condition increases too much with respect to the flux density at no load. So, iron losses at load are nearly 1.5 times in iron losses at no load. Now, coming to sparking and ring fires, as the armature reaction increases, the maximum value of air gap flux density increases at load with respect to no load. And if the voltage between resistant commuter segments increases, beyond a certain limit typically like 30 volt there is a possibility of a spark between the adjacent segment commuter segment like. Now, coming to the commutation so due to armature reaction the flux density at neutral point is not 0 and the induced EMF induced in the coil undergoing commutation at neutral access try to maintain the current in original direction and hence the delayed the commutation. So, armature reaction delayed the commutation. Now, coming to the output design equation of the DC machine, output equation is the output equation of DC machines is derived which relates between power develop and armature by armature and the main dimensions of the machine. And in DC machine the fundamental equation for power develop by armature is being converted to output equation of machine to relate its main dimensions. So, power develop by the armature in kilowatt is P A equal to E into A to 10 power 3 minus 3 in kilowatt and where P is the armature power develop E is the generated induced EMF I is the armature current. So, generated induced EMF E equal to P phi Z n upon 60 A or phi P upon A into Z n in volts. So, where P is the number of poles, phi the flux per pole, Z is the number of armature conduct and e is equal to small n equal to capital S upon 60 speed in revolution per second. Now, P equal to E A into 10 power minus 3 kilo, kilowatt and generator induced EMF is e equal to P phi Z number 60 or phi P A into Z is small n and P in kilowatt will be now phi P upon A Z n into I A into 10 power minus 3. So, P A in kilowatt will be P phi I upon A Z into Z n into 10 power minus 3. So, P A in kilowatt will be P phi I Z into Z n into 10 power minus 3 where the I A upon A is the I Z that is a current in the conductor because of A parallel path. So, now specific L magnetic loading B average is P phi upon phi d L where P phi is the total flux on the whole periphery and phi d L is the surface area of the periphery. So, we get average flux density in the air gap. And from this relation we get the P phi the whole flux all in all the poles that is B average phi into d L where B is the average flux density in the air gap also known as the specific magnetic loading and D is the armature diameter in meter L is the armature core length in the meter. Now, coming to specific electric loading ampere conductor per meter length of the periphery along with the air gap of the machine is total ampere conductor equal to A c into pi d and pi d is of course, the length I mean. So, it is total ampere turn and conductors and also total ampere conductors are i z into z to form this i z equal to pi d into A c. So, from here we can get the A c equal to i z upon pi d. Now, substituting the electrical and magnetic loading into the output equation. So, P A, P A in kilowatt equal to P phi into I z into z into n into 10 power minus 3 or P A in kilowatt equal to B average putting the value of P phi that is B average pi d L and then putting a value I z into z that is a total electrical loading pi d into A c into n into 10 power minus 3. It comes pi e square B average into A c into 10 power minus 3 into d square L n or P average comes equal to in kilowatt C 0 into d square L into small n and where C 0 is equal to pi e square B average A c into 10 power minus 3 referred as the output coefficient of DC machine. So, now typically the typically the 
a developed power for different DC machine is the output equation of P average in kilowatt is C0 D square ln relates to the power developed by the armature of the DC machine to its main dimensions uh, D and L, but the DC generator and motors the power output P average is alone is specified as the main specification. So, now let us relate the P A with the P for motor and generator. So, for motor P A is the power at the armature that is output power plus rotational losses including friction bindage and iron losses and the for generator the P average at the armature is input power that is P upon N minus the rotational losses. How you can get the P average P A from in both the cases. Now, for the large machine the rotational losses are very small thus the difference between P A and P it is very small. So, the rotational losses will be neglected hence P A equal to P for motor and P upon P A equal to P upon N for the generator eta for generator that is eta is efficiency. For a small machines the rotational losses constitute considerable percentage of output power thus will not be neglected and for a small machines the friction and windage and iron loss equal to one third of the total loss in the machine. So, rotational loss is 1 by 3 total losses may go up to that value. So, total loss is input power minus output power or P divided by efficiency minus P equal to P into 1 minus eta upon eta and rotational loss in proofing from the general losses will be one third P minus N eta divided by eta. So, for a, for a small motor and for a small generator, for a small motor P A equal to output power minus plus rotational losses or P A equal to P plus 1 by 3 P 1 minus eta upon eta. So, P this becomes P 1 plus 2 eta upon 3 eta and for generator it becomes P upon P equal to P upon eta that is one third P in one minus eta upon eta. So, P 2 plus eta divided by 3 eta. So, the major station of DC machine are given as follows the output power in kilowatt for motor and horsepower for uh, motors and kilowatt in generator and rated speed in RPM, volt, voltage, armature voltage in V type of the machine like series, sun, compound, separately excited or magnet and duty type, short duty, intermittent duty or continuous duty and excitation voltage in volts and type of insulation for to particular withstand temperature may be class F or class uh, let us say C and like a full load field current in ampere, but for warm grade material it is a type of a magnet and for pull out torque in newton meter for motor. Now, selection of B average uh, and the specific electric loading and magnetic loading. So, selection of specific magnetic loading value of magnetic maximum flux density in the air gap BM usually varies from 0.55 to 1.1 Weber per meter square or Tesla or corresponding value of average flux density in the air gap is varying from 0.4 to 0.8 Weber per meter square. So, a smaller machine have a low value of flux density as the rating increases the flux density increases. So, now typical example here the table is here. So, how it changes like typically the what is the value of maximum flux density for 5 kilowatt around 0.57 and it goes for 10 megawatt it is 1.1 vapor per meter square. So, different value certainly it increases with the rating one like. Now, coming to specific electrical loading the value of specific electric loading that is appear conductor per meter peripheral speed along with the air gap varies between 15,000 to 51,000 ampere conductor per meter and lower rating machines have lower value of specific electrical loading and higher machines have a higher value of AC. As the rating increases, the electrical loading also increases. So, as you can see the table for electrical loading, I mean we have a different values of specific electric load for different machine rating. So, for 5 kilowatt is 15,000 and for typically for 10 megawatt machine it is 51,000. Now, coming to limitations and separation of D and L, the uh, diameter at the air gap or uh, typically and the stack length of the your armature. So, factor affecting the armature diameter first is the peripheral speed. So, peripheral speed is given V A equal to pi d n upon 60 is small n that is in typically the with the d in, with increase in diameter the peripheral speed and centrifugal forces increases to provide mechanical stability peripheral velocity will not greater than 30 meter per second. I mean the another constraint is typically the pole pitch. The pole pitch obtained after selecting the suitable diameter may be used to check for the number of poles. So, as you increase typically have a different poles. So, you have a number of poles 2. So, it can go pole pitch up to 24 centimeter and if it is a high number of poles like 6 or above 
I mean pole pitch can be 45 to 55 centimeter. Now coming to the factor affecting the core length or you can call it a stack length. First is the commutation. So, the induced EMF per conductor is higher for the DC machine with longer length and this increases the voltage between adjacent commutator segments leading to the bad commutation. So, the voltage between commutator segments should not exceed 20 volt on open circuit. So, now coming to the cost, the overhang portion of the winding will be less if longer machines. So, less amount of copper will be required. So, ratio of the inactive to the active copper is less for larger health making the machine less costly and cooling. The temperature rise in the middle portion of a machine length of DC machine will be high as it is difficult to ventilate for larger for larger length machine. Now, for the limit coming limitation for this for the large diameter the overhang copper is more. So, the volume weight and cost of the copper is higher. So, induced MF I mean in a conductor is G is equal to B average LV VA. So, B average average frequency V is a peripheral velocity of the armature. So, limiting value of the induced MF in conductor is typically 7.5 divided by TC into N. Where TC is the terms per coil and C is the number of coils between the adjacent segment. So, 1 for simplex and 1 by 2 for simplex wave winding. Now, coming to from E z equal to B average LV, the limiting value of EMF in the conductor is 7.5 divided by TC into N. So, we obtain B average LV equal to 7.5 divided by TC into NC. So, limited core length will be now L equal to 7.5 divided by TC and C B average and V average. These are the typical guidelines. Like. Now, with a typical example is let us take a simple simplex winding with a single turn coil that is TC equal to 1, NC equal to 1. So, for industrial MF equation with VA equal to 30 meter per second and B average equal to 0.75 uh, Weber per meter square, the industrial MF in the conductor EZ will be 7.5 volt. So, substituting the above value in the limiting core length formula, we, we will get limiting value of core length will be 7.5 divided by 1 into 1 into 0.75 into 30 that becomes 0.33 meter. So, we know that the power output P equal to E into I into 10 power minus 3. So, and the e EMF is e equal to e small EZ, EMF per conductor into Z upon A, the number of typically conductor in one parallel path. So, substituting the EMF equation in power output P equal to EZ upon Z upon A into I into N power minus 3. So, P equal to EZ upon I A upon A into Z into N power minus 3. So, it becomes EZ pi D A C into 10 power minus 3 because A C is I Z upon pi D. So, D becomes P into 10 power 3 minus 3 divided by pi AC into EZ. Now, the typical example for limiting the armature diameter. So, assuming the ampere electrical loading is third, specific electric loading is 30,000 EZ 10 volt for DC machine with a power output of 100 kilo, 1000 kilowatt. So, limiting diameter of the machine D equal to P into 10 power minus 3 divided by pi AC into EZ. So, putting the value it comes 1 meter. Output equation PA TD square LN. So, C is the output coefficient and written as C in equal to pi square B average AC into 10 power minus 3. So, then D square LN is P upon CN. So, usually square pole phase, I mean separation of D and L of these main dimensions. One relation you get from typically from output equation. So, we have to get another relation for between D and L so that we can find out separate value of this D and L. So, usually <coughs> The square pole phase construction is used since the length of the mean turn of winding is reduced. So, pole arc upon pole pitch that is BP upon TP is a 5 where P is the pole arc length and pi is varies between 0.65 to 0.72 for the DC machine. So, for square pole phase construction the length the pole arc length is equal to the length of the machine. So, tau P becomes L and so the square pole phase construction as you can see in the figure the BP upon TP equal to L upon TP that is equal to 0.65 to 0.72 equal to psi. So, in long pole construction, the length of the machine is taken up to the twice of the width of the pole body. So, L equal to B or 2 2B or equal to 0.45 to 1.1 into tau T or L upon T is equal to 0.45 to 1.1. So, for square pole phase construction, the main dimension D and L can be calculated as BP on top P. L equal to L upon top P equal to 0.65 to 0.72. For long pole construction, the main dimensions can be calculated as L upon top P equal to 0.72 to 
0 9 pi and top equal to pi d upon p. Now, coming to some of the theoretical problems, question 1 is the mention the two types of winding used in DC machine, answer is lap and wave winding. Question 2 is define copper space factor of the coil, answer is the copper space factor of the coil is defined as the ratio of the conductor area and area of the cross section of the coil, that is copper space factor equal to conductor area divided by area of cross section of the coil. The question 3 is write the expression for the power developed as the uh, armature of DC machine in terms of the maximum flux gap density. The answer is the power develop of the armature DC of the DC machine in terms of diameter and axial length and speed is given P equal to DC 0 D square ln where C is equal to pi square AV to 10 power minus 3 is referred as the output coefficient of the DC machine. The question is what are the factors to be considered for the choice of specific loading? The factor affecting the loading a temperature rise, the speed of the machine, size of the machine, voltage, armature action and commutation. What is the mean of by commutation? The process of current reversal in an armature coil is called commutation. The question is what are the effects of armature reaction? The answer is effects. The various effects of armature action are reduction in reduced chamber, of increase in ion loss, delayed commutation and sparking and ring firing. The question saying why interpoles are desirable in DC machine? Answer is interpoles are desirable in DC machine since these cause the following effects sparkless competition can be obtained up to 35 percent to overload with the fixed thrust position. This ensures automatic neutralization of reactance voltage, which is also due to armature current and interpol neutralize the cross magnetizing effect of armature reaction. Hence, the brushes are not to be shifted from their original position. The core loss cross magnetization is nullified automatically for all the loads because both are produced by the armature current, interpol windings are connected also in the series with the armature circuit. So, question 8 is why the yoke of DC machine is not laminated in the armature core is limited. The answer is flux in DC machine is steady and unilateral. The armature is rotating part to flux in the slots and teeth region changes because of change of reluctance of the magnetic circuit. So, or frequency in stator there are no change of reluctance hence the uh, Typically, yoke or DC machine is not limited, but the armature core is limited, so the losses in armature action can be reduced. Question 9, the what is the type of typical magnetic loading value of DC machine? The magnetic loading varies from 0.6 Tesla to 1.2 Tesla, which depends on the rating of the machine. Question 10, what is the typical specific magnetic value of machine? The depending on the specific electric loading of the machine, so depending upon the Typically, the DC machine, the specific electric loading varies from 15,000 to 50,000. Now, question 11, selection of higher gap flux density uh, for design of armature will improve uh, the competition, reducer or reduction, so it will cause reduced weight. Question 12, in DC machine, the reducible magnetism is present, the order of reducible magnetism order of around 2 to 3 percent. The flux density in the air gap of the interpole is normally less than the under main pole. The armature core is made of silicon steel because of strong permeability and large magnetic strength. Now, coming to the numerical problems. Now, first question or numerical problem is the specific electric loading 18,000 and average flux density 0.46 uh, Weber per meter square and the output coefficient of DC machine. So, given B average 0.46 Tesla is equal to 18,000 ampere per conductor uh, ampere per meter. So, the C0 is pi square B average AC into n power minus 3, putting the value C0 comes 81.6. Now, question 2 is calculate the armature power of 12 kilowatt to 20 volt, 4 pole, 1200 RPM, sun tender, assume full load efficiency of 0.86 and the negative flux and windage losses. So, given here P equal to 12 and number of poles 4 and efficiency equal to 0.86. So, P A for sun generator, P A equal to P upon eta. So, it becomes like a PA equal to 13.95 kilowatt. Now, question 3 estimate the diameter of and the length of armature core of a 12 kilowatt to 24 pole 1200 RPM generator. The specific electric loading 18,000 ampere per meter and average flux density 0.46 Tesla. The full load efficiency 0.86 and length long length long pole construction is adopted. Length of the pole which is 0.92, friction windage losses are neglected. So, solution is that the armature power PA equal to P upon eta, so keeping a value it comes 13.95 kilowatt. 
and speed n equal to 1200 upon 60 to 20 revolution per second. Now, output coefficient c0 equal to pi square b average ac into n power minus 3. So, putting the value to it comes 81.6. So, from output equation p equal to c0 d square ln. So, d square ln putting a value p upon cn it comes 0 0.0085 and now for long construction l upon tau is 0.92. So, l comes 0.92 into pi d upon p or equal to 0.72 d and putting the value this in typically output equation 0.72 d cube equal to 8.5 10 power minus 3 it gives the equation d equal to 0.22 meter l equal to 0.16 meter. Now, coming to question 4 calculate the output coefficient of DC generator the maximum air gap plug density 0.9 vapor per meter square and specific electric loading AC 36 ampere con, thousand per ampere con, per meter square pole body construction is preferred and the polar to pole pressure OC is 0.69. Solution is given B, B maximum 0.9 Tesla and AC equal to 36,000 ampere per meter and psi equal to 0.69. The output coefficient C0 is pi square B A pi square psi B average AC into 10 power minus 3 putting the value it comes C equal to 220 into 0.46. Now, question 5 estimate the diameter length of the armature core of a four pole 400, 400, 4 kilowatt, 400 kilowatt, 400 volt, 1200 DC generator. The maximum air gap plug density is 0.92 Tesla and armature ampere conductor per length of 40,000 ampere per meter. The ratio of polar to pole is 0.78 and efficiency 0.9. The output coefficient C0 equal to pi square B average AC, putting the value it comes to 283 and now P. A equal to P upon eta, so that's putting a value from 444.44, and from output equation D square L equal to P upon C n, so putting a value it comes 0 0.78, and now L upon tau is given 0.9, so L equal to 0.9 pi D upon P, so when P equal to 4, then L becomes 0 0.78, 0 0.7 D, so putting a value now output equation 0 0.78 D cube equal to 0 0.078, so D comes equal to 0.48, and L comes 0 0.34 meter. Now coming to question six. Estimates the specific loading and specific electrical loading and magnetic loading of 200 kilowatt, 410, 480 volt RPM. Four pole generator having a diameter of 0.8 meter and length of 0.2 meter. It has a wave winding of 450 conductor. Voltage drop in armature is assumed to be negligible. So, solution is as the armature current is I equal to 200 and 2000 upon P output in watt divided by voltage that comes 487.8 ampere and four wave wound. The number of parallel path is equal to A. So, conductor is IZ equal to IE upon A that is become 242.9 ampere. And total number of conductor 450. So, specific electrical loading AC IZ Z upon pipe D putting a value it comes 43,692.2 ampere conduct per meter. And total flux P phi P average P average pi DL. So, B average comes by P phi upon pi DL. And but from industry MF equal to P phi Z upon A. So, P phi becomes E Z upon N Z. So, B average E A upon pi D L into Z putting a value it comes 0.45 Weber per meter square. Now, coming to question number 7, the specific electrical loading of is 34,000 ampere per meter and the average flux density 0.5 Weber per meter square find the output coefficient of DC machine. So, given B average 0.5 and A C equal to 34,000 output coefficient pi A square B average A C into N power minus thing putting value C0 is 170.96. Now, coming to unsolved problem. So, we have unsolved problems here with the answer. You can solve each typically the different unsolved problems. And these are the books or reference material what we use to develop typically I mean this material. You can refer these books and thank you very much.